What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745, and it's that time again, the end of the PvP season. So where did you end up in Season 29? Let me know in the comment section below. As for myself, we finished in Adamantium, so I was lucky enough to win Cloak and Dagger. Besides that, we got 100,000 silver, 10 gold, then what looks to be a pretty promising weapon, the Spirit Blade. This particular weapon is an AoE attack. It provides magic warding to the agent, and allies protect the holder of the blade from single target attacks. It also has Ethereal Strike, guaranteed hit, and ignores defense. Plus it causes Breakdown Hexed, Drained Essence. It's just a pretty good all-around weapon. Definitely something we're going to try out. Following that for Vibranium, we got the Blasters Infused Tech Suit. This has Fireproof, immune to harmful fire effects, reduces damage taken from fire and energy attacks, plus it has Wildfire. Area attacks without the Ice type now gain the Fire type and cannot be protected against, plus it has a chance for attacks to explode, causing fire damage and Scorched plus increased chance for fire and energy attacks. So pretty cool suit and like I said we're going to cover all the infused tech suits soon. So I haven't forgot about that. As for the main prize, we got Cloak and Dagger, they're a Scrapper and Infiltrator, and they start with Blinding Light, immune to blinded and dark effects, chance to preemptively counter melee attacks, applying blinded, off balance and winded. Then they also have Dark Teleportation, high chance to avoid range attacks. All in all, these two look incredible, and I cannot wait to try them out. So we'll go ahead and recruit them, then we'll see them briefly in action, plus the Spirit Blade and new suit. We're going to try them with all sorts of characters, everyone from Kurth to Morbius. But first we have to get them and level them. So here they are. The final character we needed in game. And now we once again have everyone. After that, moving on to the recruitment dialogue. So you're the agent we've been hearing so much about. It's nice to finally meet you. Are you ready to walk in the shadows? Don't mind him. Cloak just likes to be intimidating. The type of people we usually deal with, well, maybe you can understand why he seems a little foreboding. That, or maybe it's because I can feed off the life force of another. No need to worry, just as long as Dagger is around. Seriously, Ty, you can be horrible sometimes. And there we have it, a slightly extended recruitment dialogue. But now we're going to go ahead and equip that armor and the weapon, and we'll be right back in PvE. First though, a quick little research is needed, and it will cost you 12,300 silver, I believe. But at least we can speed it up and finish it right away. So jumping into battle. We are first going to use them with Hellcat. And their sprite is so big they're kind of off screen down there. So I guess we'll try them out in the second position after we reach level 2. First though, here's the Spirit Blade. And it does hit all the enemies. They've gotten some pretty nasty debuffs already from that. And Hellcat, of course, is a pretty awesome character herself. She has one big thing in common with Cloak and Dagger. That's their level 1 applies diminished resolve. So they're going to be doing that quite a bit. And it counts as the delirium effect. As far as Cloak and Dagger's level 1 though, it's called Bright Blades. It has Ethereal Strike. It's a Psychic Energy Attack. Like I said, it causes diminished resolve. Purges the enemy. So it removes their class bonuses. But besides that, it grants them rising up. So pretty impressive level 1. With their passives and the fact that they're an infiltrator slash scrapper, they should be doing this attack quite a bit as well. So talk about delirium effects adding up in a hurry. These two are very capable of that. I think Morbius and Kurth are going to be really dangerous with them. But this first fight is going to be quite quick, but don't worry, when we come back at level 2, we'll take on a multi-wave threat that should give us more time to see what they're all about. 
So as for Hellcat, she attacks and causes a rapier follow up so that's the end of the enemy specialist. Now I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead till we have them at level 2. So here we are we did a few more battles in chapter 10 mission 1. And now that they're at level 2, we have access to another ability. But first let's go ahead and switch their position. Now we can see their full sprite and we're in a 3 way fight so we should see quite a bit of action. Now their new ability is called Blackout. It's an AOE debuff. It's catastrophic. Removes buffs. Causes dementia. So delirium effects. Plus it has dark forces. Chance to cause harmful dark effects. Including apprehension, bane, dark void, doom, falter, sin, and shadow graft. Plus it drains health over time. It restores them though. But it will even drain your own team. Now the cool thing is it actually changes the background as well which I had no idea. So that's a really amazing effect. And just look at all these different debuffs on the enemy team. Pretty impressive. Now with Hellcat we're going to use Cleaving Claws on the top warrior. And then we got an extra turn. So we'll go ahead and use Krav Maga on the middle scientist. This also prompts a follow up attack. So he's knocked out. Then after they attack a few times while well, Cloak and Dagger actually steps up and protects. Because of the Spirit Blade. But with our agent we're going to use the Rapier on the top warrior. So back to Cloak and Dagger's turn. We'll use a Bright Blades. Followed by Cleaving Claws from Hellcat. This warrior is actually taking quite a while to go down but my agent should finish him off with another rapier attack. So moving on to the next wave really soon. Now what appears to be the case with Cloak and Dagger is they do follow up and counter with Bright Blades. That's a pretty awesome thing because remember, it does a lot including giving them rising up buffs. So we do in fact double attack an infiltrator. After a follow up attack from my agent because of the spirit blade we once again get protected. But this time our passive procs. And cloak and dagger do an awesome animation dodging the attack. Finally something against range attacks. I mean yeah there are some other things but we need some more range attack hate. And cloak and dagger may be one of the answers. And you know what, I actually got confused. I thought this was the final wave, but we do have one more. And Cloak and Dagger are draining our team's health just a bit. So we may want to top them up soon. Our agent's not going to give us any time right now though. He finishes off the final enemy. So moving on to the third wave. This time we're going to use a candy bucket, restoring our health and stamina. Then we unleash a huge capoeira on the enemy. That's what Hellcat is capable of. She's very tough. Definitely a cool hero. So we'll see more of her with Cloak and Dagger. And of course many other even better team ups. Only 7 more levels to go. But for now we are coming very close to the end. So once again I just want to ask you all to comment. Let me know what you thought about this season. What were your biggest pet peeves? Where did you place? What did you hate? And is there anything you liked? That's going to be it for our reward video, but thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck and take care.